song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us, and all who will believe, will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all. And the angels cry. song forever to the Lamb. Hallelujah. And if you walk in freedom, if you bear His name, sing a song forever to the Lamb. We will sing a song forever.
transform us Lord help us not to go back the same way we came in this place Lord for you're all we need you're all we desire may you feel us oh God we love you we worship you thank you Lord thank you Holy Spirit come on let's give him a mighty hand clap thank you Jesus thank you Lord Hallelujah. We may have our seats. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we excited to be in the presence of the Lord? Come on, are you excited? And are you expectant? Hallelujah. Say hello to your neighbor. Just Say hello. Tell them you're welcome in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Resti Mulunji, a youth pastor, C3 Kazo. I'm so much happy to be standing before you right now. I want to thank God for my pastor, Pastor Bernard, for giving me the opportunity to share with you the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is a church which encourages growth. Amina. So if you're there and you desire to grow, don't leave this church and continue to desire and pursue it. Hallelujah. And to thank God for today, I'm going to share with you the word of God and my theme for today is honoring God. Amen. I'll slightly go back to what we, we learned last week. Pastor Ne taught us about honoring God, honoring people. And she taught us that honor is a key to our blessings. Hallelujah. She told us different things. And we read in Romans 13 verse 7, which encourages us to honor, to give honor to him. To everyone, give honor to, let's read there. Honor is due, you give it to the person who, Romans, Romans 13 verse 7. Let's read there briefly. It says, render therefore to 
all they are due. Taxes to whom taxes are due. Customs to whom customs. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. Hallelujah. We give honor to the person. Hallelujah. Uh, I remember her telling us that when you choose to marry someone, you have to give that person honor. Honor is due to that person. Unfortunately, you didn't choose your parents, but God chose them. Amen? So the moment you are born by that lady, she deserves to be honored by you. Amen? And the moment you choose to join a church, a ministry, the pastors, the leaders of that church deserve to be honored by you. Amen? Then we learned that honor is given. We all know that respect is different from honor. And respect is earned. When I behave in a wrong way, people who have been respecting me, they can choose not to respect me again. Respect is earned, but honor is due. Hallelujah. Then honor is at 360 degrees. Amen? It's all around. You not only honor the people who are above you, but you're supposed to honor the people who are above you, the people who are at the same level with you, and the people who are below you. Amen? Know that you will honor your pastor, and when you go back home, you dishonor your husband or your wife or your employees or your maids. So it's all around. Hallelujah. We also learned that honor is supposed to be with substance. You don't just speak words, but you act. It's like faith. Without action, it's nothing. It's dead. Amen? So you honor with a substance. Substance means tangible, something tangible. Amen? You, you can choose to take Pastor Bernard, like, you know, you honor him, and you take him out for lunch, for dinner, or... Take him at select garment and you tell him, Pastor, pick a suit of your choice. That is honoring someone with substance. And today I'm going to talk about honoring God. We are going to read from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 9 to 10. Let's open our Bibles. Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 9 to 10. It says, Honor the Lord with your possessions. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your bands will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Amen. This scripture explains to, her, to us how we can honor God. Some of us have ideas of honoring God, and you're like, ah, I sing every day at church. I serve in services. I come to church and I mop. I do ushering. I help out. I go out and preach and evangelize. I attend every connect. I attend every conference. You know, there is something I'm doing for the Lord. I sing. I dance. That means I'm honoring God. Amen. But Proverbs 3, 9 shows us how to honor God. We honor God with our possessions, with our first fruits. Do you understand what we mean by first fruits? The, 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 <laughs> our first fruits, the, the, the blessings we get. Let's say you're, you've, you've got a job and your first salary, that is a first fruit. Amen? Maybe you're, you're farming, you're doing farming, and there are those, that harvest you get, it is your first fruit. Amen? You've started a business, 
the first profits you get are your first fruits. Hallelujah. So the Bible is telling us, God is telling us to honor him with our first fruits and all our possessions, our cars, our monies, in the account, the things we own. Amen. And many of us, like I said, we think we are honoring God because we serve, you're always there. But when it, when it reached to your money, you're saying, ah, that is my car money. That one is mine. Amen. So that shows that you're honoring God with just your lips. Isaiah, God saw this and he, he spoke through Isaiah in Isaiah 29. We can open our Bibles in Isaiah 29, verse 13. Isaiah 29, verse 13. Talks about people who honors God just with their lips when their hearts are far from the Lord. Amen? It says, uh, Therefore the Lord said, Inasmuch as these people draw near with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the commandment of men. Hallelujah. That these people were honoring God with just their lips. With just their mouths. When their hearts were too, too far from him. Amen? It is the same thing we are doing today as the church of Christ. We are honoring, honoring God just with our lips. God tells you, you know what, you've got this money. Kindly give it to so and so. And you're like, ah, God, I also don't have, you know, I have many challenges. Hmm? I've been believing you for this come money. Now it has come and you're telling me to, to give it away. Nah, but God understands. You're like, but God understands. I'm not giving it away. There you're saying that you're honoring God, but you're doing it from your lips, not from your heart. Why? The Bible tells us in uh, Matthew 6, 21, that where, where your treasure is, your heart lies. Amen? So if you're honoring God, not with your lips. If you're honoring God with your heart, that means your treasures will be directed by the Lord. Amen? Like it will be God who will be directing you how to use those treasures. If he tells you to give away, you will give. If he tells you to bless someone, you will do that. Amen? Amen? So uh, I want us to note these things down. One, honor is about the heart. It is possible to honor God with your mouth and lips. But when your heart is very, very far, it is super possible. Hallelujah. Where your heart is, your treasure is. If I love someone, I'll give them. Actually, I'll open up my door, my house for them to come in. So if I love God, if I honor God, if I treasure God, I'll give him my everything, my possessions, my first fruits. Hallelujah. When God increases us, he expects us to honor him with what he has increased us with. Amen? So, many times God gives us blessings and he's just making us pipelines through which he can bless other people, through which he can bless the church, through which he can do his work. 
But when we receive those blessings, we keep them to ourselves. We keep them to ourselves. And he comes back and he's like, you know what? You remember the other man I gave you to you? Kindly get one million, give it to so and so. And you're like, no, God. That car money, I'm saving it for my kataka, for my land. I want to buy this and this. And God, I told you. And he's like, no, you give it away. Because for him, he knows why he's telling you to do so. Amen? But most of the times we refuse to do it. Amen. Number two, honor without treasure is no honor at all. Honor without treasure is no honor at all. We have to honor with our hearts, then also with our treasures. Still Matthew 6, 21. Let's read there. Matthew 6, 21. It says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Where is your treasure? Okay. Where is your heart? Is your heart in the Lord or is your heart in your money and your treasures and your possessions? Where is your treasure? This scripture shows, that, shows us that treasure leads. Amen? Treasure leads. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So, when treasure goes this side, your heart will also go this side. When treasure goes, when your treasure goes to God, and you're like, God, you've given me these treasures, you've given me these blessings, now, I'm giving them back to you. Your heart will definitely be connected to God's heart. Hallelujah. So, the treasure gets there before the heart. Amen? The treasure. Our money's on the account. Our cars, our houses, our jobs. Get there before the heart. So if we really want to love God, if we want to honor God truthfully, we must learn to give sacrificially. Amen? Giving is not easy. It is painful, by the way. You buy your card dress. <laughs> you put it on once. Sometimes you don't even put it on. And God is like, you know what? Pack it. Give it to someone. Amen? You get your car money. You know you've been believing God for a job. And here comes a job, well-paying job. And you receive your salary. And then as, and the Holy Spirit reminds you, honor the Lord with all your possessions and all the increase of your first fruits. And you're like, vow devil. You understand? You're like, ah, uh ah, -uh, this is not good. I have been suffering. I've not been having anything. Now I've got my money and I give it away. But let me ask you, child of God, the months you've been living without that job, how have you been surviving? Who has been taking care of you? It has been the Lord. The months you've been earning, let's say 500 monthly, and now God has increased you, he has blessed you, they've promoted you, or you've got some other, you've started some other businesses, and your earnings, when you, talk, when you add them up, your monthly earnings, they've increased. And now you're saying, I am not giving 
God my first fruit. How have you been surviving with that one income? God has been sustaining you. So the God who is telling you to give out this first fruit for just this month, he's the God who will sustain you. Amen. Because he has been doing it. And he will continue doing it. Amen. And he tells us that the more you give, the more he increases you. By the way, when you don't give it, you might be black, bl blocking your blessings. Amen? So, we need to honor God with our first fruits. We need to learn to give sacrificially to him and to the things he cares about. Amen? As C3 Kazo, do we know what God is caring about right now? Something is telling us to put our treasures in right now. Just look around. He wants that church to be built. And who is going to build it? It's you and me. Not the Muzungu. Not the pastors. Not the leaders. Not Phoebe. Not the building committee. But it is you. So, when they are telling us, we, have money, we need money, envelope, there is somewhere where it, it is indicated, build, landed building. And you're like, ah, I don't have money. But even that 10,000, God can bless you with that 10,000 you're giving. Amen? He understands that right now you cannot afford to buy a bag of cement. He understands it very well. But it's like, use what I've given you right now. Test me with the little you have. Amen? Then if you're faithful in this, then I will increase you and make you able to give a hundred bags of cement. Amen? Amen? So God cannot have your heart without having. God cannot have your treasures. God cannot have your heart, sorry, without having your treasure first. You cannot say, now uh, things concerning worship, kneeling down, uh, mopping, singing. Ah, me and God, we are tight. But things concerning uh, giving, ah, uh, uh, God, you be there. Me, I will understand for myself. You won't understand for me. Amen? So you cannot, God cannot have your heart before having your treasure. Mark 10, 17. Let's go and read there. Mark 10, 17 from verse 22. This, uh, this parable talks about the rich young ruler. Amen. He desired to become a disciple of Jesus. Let's, let's see. Uh, let's hear what happened. Verse 17 says, Now as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I might inherit eternal life? Like we are asking right now, Good teacher, you've told us that you're going to raise a hundred billionaires from C3 Kazo. Good teacher, you promised to increase us. You've promised to give us the riches of this world. Amen? What shall we do? Amen? Nah? So, God, God, Jesus was like, so Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is good. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he answered, and say to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. 
Amina, like we could say, you know, I walk rightly. I'm in the worship team. I attend all the practices. We have like <laughs> about like five practices or four practices a week. And we put in transport. We put in money. And also the time, by the way. And you're like, yeah. I even go for sales, connect groups. I'm there. Yeah. Overnight, I'm always there. Yeah. Evangelism on Saturday. God, all those things I've kept since. I got saved. But what else can I do to honor you, to show that I honor you, to show that I love you, so that you can also increase me? Amen? And Jesus answered. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him, and he said to him, One thing you lack, go your way, Sell whatever you have and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross and follow me. Verse 22. But he was sad at this word and went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. He was sad because he was told, to give out his possessions. Hallelujah. So we might be here talking, I might be here telling you, and someone is like, hmm, you've started to become sad. But don't be sad. Amen. Don't be sad. God is faithful. He blesses you. He has called you to be a blessing. The more he bless you, the more he wants you to be a blessing to many. We all pray for those prayers. God, make me a blessing, make me a blessing, make me a blessing. But the bad thing is that when he gives you, you don't want to give. You want to keep it to yourself. You pile it, you pile it, you pile it. Amen? Amen? My fourth point, my other point is if you're faithful in the little things, God will entrust you with bigger things. Luke 16, verse 10 to 11. If you're faithful, he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much and he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much therefore if you have not been faithful in in the unrighteous mammon who will commit to your trust the true riches who will trust you with the true riches who will trust you with bigger things with a lot of money God will not. Amen. Even your fellow Christian will not. If I give you my 50K and I tell you, you know what, keep it for me. I'm coming to get it. Maybe I'll get it whenever I wish. And I come back to you and I ask for my 50K and you're telling me, you know what, I used it. I don't have it. I won't trust you with money. Again, I'll trust you with other things, maybe. But I won't trust you with money. I won't trust you with much money. Amen? So, if we are not faithful in that, in that which is least, we cannot be faithful in much. Amen? Our lives are so much more than money. So much more than money. But unfortunately, we've elevated money to the place of God. Amen? The way we love money, 
I think we are comparing money to God. We've elevated money to the place of God. No wonder the Bible says that money is the root of all evil. Money is not bad. But when you worship money, you understand, you make money your God instead of allowing God to rule over your money. Amen? So, it is money which, takes, which talks and we listen. And God talks and we don't listen. Subsad. Sente zezo gela, eh? Sente zezo gela nga zikutuma. Zozi uliriza. Neka tonda wa yogela, tomu uliriza. But how can we live a life which honors God? Is by honoring God with all our possessions and all the increase of our first fruit. Amen? Be willing to subdue your treasure by giving it away. You want your treasure to subdue? You want your treasures to increase? Be willing to give them away. Amen? If God says so, do it quickly and happily. Then he will increase you. Amen? He will increase you. So when you give your treasures away, it shows that you're giving your treasure to God. You're giving your heart to God. We saw previously that treasure leads, then the heart follows. So if you're ready, if you give out your treasure to God, and you're like, God, my things are your things. Actually, they are not my things. They are his. But when he gives them to us, eh, when he entrusts them to us, we are just stewards. But to take on it to be warm and to be a Amen. And that, eh, not kayo no je fuga. Yobuga gabio no be fuga. Amen. A kasente koko account yo moon sauzo no ke fuga no gama kano kange. This is mine. It is not God's. Now, God's money is this one, the, te the, te the tenth. I received, I received the money. He asked me for the tenth. I gave him my tithe. So, the rest of the money is mine, is mine. I don't want to listen to God telling me anything. But God is calling us to entrust him with our treasures. To love him with our possessions, possessions and honor him with our first fruits. And honoring him with substance. Like we said, it's not all about singing, dancing, preaching, that you're honoring God. Me, I will preach Kalamba Musumba. Whenever you need a preacher, I am here. Because I want to honor God. No. We also have to honor God with our substances. However little it is. Because the more you give him, the more he increases you. And the more you will give bigger and bigger. Amen. So, either money will have your heart or God will. And there is no middle ground on that. Your heart is either with God or with money. You cannot be in between. Amen. So how can we honor God with our hearts? How can we love God with our hearts? How can we give him? How can we stand and say that you know what me, I am honoring God? It is by giving him all our possessions. When he bless you with something, and at the same time, he tells you that, you know what? 
Give this to so and so. Give this to my church so that my work can be done. Please do so. With that, you will be honoring the Lord. There are benefits of honoring God. It's not just that we are going to give him to Viremuao. No. He promised us in Proverbs. Let's go there and read it again. Proverbs 3, as I wind up. Proverbs 3. Three nine, it says, "So honor the Lord with your possessions, and with the first fruits of your increase." Benefit one. So your blessings will be filled. So your bands will be filled with plenty. So that your pockets will be filled with plenty. So that your accounts, it's not good to have one account. We need to have many accounts. So if you still have one account, you're not yet filled with plenty. Amen? So when we honor him, he will increase us and our accounts will be filled with plenty. Our livestock will be increased. Our farms will be increased. Our businesses will grow bigger and bigger. If we honor him with all our possessions and our first fruits. Then our vats will overflow with new wine. Whatever we do, we will see a blessing out of it. Amen? Hallelujah. You might be saying that, um, how can I count my first fruit? By the way, what is my first fruit? The Holy Spirit will guide you. We have businesses. Some of us have personal businesses. You can choose that every money, every profit I earn in the first week of the month, I'll give it to the Lord. Or every money I earn, in the first day, on the first day of the month, I'll give it to the Lord. Amen? We have, we have different sources of income. Someone might bless you with money and you're like, okay, this money they have given to me. Let me give it to someone. Let me give it to the Lord. Hallelujah. There you're telling God that you know what, God, this money you're seeing here is not mine. It is yours. Now, God, you need to increase it. Amen? And he will. Hallelujah. So, um, and, to, and to see those people, you're saying that uh, today, I'm choosing to honor God with my possessions and I'm choosing to honor God with my first fruit. There is a story of uh, one of our pastor friend of this church. He said that one time he was led by the Holy Spirit to give his first fruit. And you know, towards Christmas, eh? They give us money. You get money, but that money has to take you for January. Not so. But he gave it away to the Lord in a project. They were building a church. So he gave it away. And he was like, oh, how are we going to live, to survive? We're having only one income. And the Lord is telling me to give it away. He tested the Lord. Like God test, tells us to test him in Malachi. We test him with our tithes and offerings and our first fruits. He did it and he gave it away. He says, 
that he got money, God provided. God provided. People started looking for him. There is this particular lady. He said that he call, she called him for two weeks. She was looking for him. And sometimes he didn't pick actually. He thought she was asking for counseling. Musumba, where are you? Musumba, where are you? So this pastor thought that this lady was looking for counseling. But after two weeks, he, get in, he got into, in touch with her. And this lady was like, Pastor, I've been looking for you to give you this money. The Lord told me to give you this money. Amen? And then things didn't stop on those miracles. He says between January that year to January the next year, they had finished building the first phase of their house. God provided money. The money they gave in, God multiplied it times 12. And that same God, who did for that pastor? He's the same God. Who can do it for you? You just need to obey. Only obeying. Amina, only obeying and you take a step of faith, sacrificially, and you start to give as the Lord tells you to. So I want to see those people. You're saying that from today onwards, I want to give God my first fruit and to start honoring God with my possessions. Maybe some of the things I've been knowing them, like the first fruit, I've been hearing about it, but I've not been doing it, giving it. I've been taking it for granted. And right now you're saying that I want to Give God my first fruit. I believe the Holy Spirit will guide you. He will teach you how to count it. He will teach you. Amina, let me welcome you to come in front. As a sign of surrendering and telling God, God, I'm coming out of the crowd. Here I am. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you.